Welcome to the round 15 review for Supercoach 2023. It's George from Fantasy Take TV. So the buy rounds are done and yeah, had a, had a good week this week. I think we did cop at the last few weeks, but all evens out. So yeah, got rid of like the North boys and didn't have too many premiums, like no butters, no cogs and whatnot in this buy round. So it was not too difficult for us. Uh, 2,174, we'll take that and half our rank 1.5K. So I think three years in a row, our rank after the buys has been around one to two K and it's happened again. So not a lot went, I think like everything needs to go right. And if a few things go wrong, then yeah, your rank can kind of balloon out a fair bit. Um, yeah, but do, do wish I had a few extra trades and I think a few players will be death riding post buy. Um, I think Petrarch is going to be the main one and we won't have Oliver and we actually traded Sicily after saying that I was going to hold him for two weeks straight. So we'll get to that in a second. But uh, yeah, I'll take this rank. It's pretty, uh, I don't know what the word is, but shattered, pissed off um, with the well, the Crows' loss against Collingwood. Learned how feral Collingwood supporters are on Twitter. Some are right, but most of them are pretty feral. Um, but yeah, I think they're the most feral supporter base for sure. Like you look at you know you look at Essendon supporter base you know they cop it but I think they're I think they overrate their players and they whinge a lot but at least they are um, at least they're realistic um, you know you look at Carlton supporters most deluded supporter base from trade period until I don't know three months into the season say trade period until May just a full delusion every year but but Collingwood they take the cake for just being feral maggots i don't know how to how else to put it but oh my god so unbearable they're just gloating non-stop oh my god but yeah i just thought they're umpiring i don't comment much on the umpiring but that was that i couldn't believe what i was seeing there's the amount of free kicks um that weren't paid like our play is gross plays were getting thrown off the ball at stoppages it happened time and time again to lead and keys and umpires were just watching. Matt Stevick just stared and watched. Didn't even call it. The Dawson one at the end. I posted that on Twitter. Um, very, very salty. Very salty. So if you're a Collingwood supporter, you're probably lapping up the tears at the moment. But um, yeah, it's pretty filthy with that. But we'll get to Supercoach. So um, it was, at least the Crows are going all right now after a few years not going well. Because honestly, I was watching that game in the second quarter thinking, oh, we look no chance here. And then... Turned it around in the third quarter. So um, our trades last week were, we brought in Marich, which was kind of a waste of time because he didn't even need him, but he's a 102K. So that was the most important thing. I brought in Marich and uh, Darcy Cameron for Ford and Chincotta. So I'm happy with that. Darcy Cameron always worries me with the durability, but I think I need to just shut up about durability so much. So um yeah, the role's there. He, he looks all right. A few good contested marks, a few hitouts to advantage. And yeah, the points are there for him. So he, no, he played good. So happy with that. And I think the right cover will be very nice um, against those who don't have that, just in case something happens to... I think the main three are English, Marshall and Briggs. Uh, a few wits here and there for those who went wits over Briggs a few weeks ago or had him however long ago. But um, yeah, I think they're all they're all pretty good and happy with whatever combo. Hopefully English. I think a lot of would have done cashed in English and just used Briggs, fix up the whole, the rest of the team, maybe get a nice 23rd premium. So we need English to do well for the rest of the year. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll get to that. Um, once we do our final trade, I'll get to how I think we'll go towards the end of the year. Uh, there's nine rounds to go, so we'll see. So, oh yeah, the third trade we did was we did Ben Keys in for Sicily. So I was sort of thinking about this trade but I wasn't sure and I think it was either in one of my videos or the podcast where I said if the Crows can give us indication that Keys will play mid I'll trade him in I wake up this morning I check check my phone I was kind of checking to see how the Russia the Russia war was going that was pretty wild what was happening but I think they've made some peace agreement and back to trying to conquer Ukraine or whatever they're doing but yes yeah, kind of following that last night because it looked like it was going to get pretty I don't know if people were following that on the news but it looked like it was getting pretty ugly they had like all their tanks and troops heading towards Moscow and like the Russia infighting but anyway 
no one uh, wants to hear that on Supercoach channel, but um, yeah, check my phone for that. And then I also found a link on Twitter about Ben Keys had an article on afl.com.au and it just said that he's back in the midfield after playing forward in the first half of the year. And I thought, that's enough for me. I'll bring him in. And he started in the CBA and played a fair bit mid. I haven't seen the CBAs, but I think it'll be pretty good. Played all right. I think scored 119, probably a bit lucky. I think I was probably tracking for like a about 100 and then did some nice things with major scaling coming and you propped up his score. So there was a few other clues. I think Matthew Nix was kind of hinting that he probably wasn't going to hard tag Dacos um, in the interview that he did uh, at a press conference. And then uh, another interview with Rochelle was saying that he's just kind of pinch hitting in the midfield. So I thought, well, if Sloan played more wing the other week, Rochelle's pinch hitting in the midfield. Like who else is getting in the mid time? Um, it leaves basically Keys and maybe Saligo and the Saligo's sort of been like like when he's in there he's really good but maybe he can't handle high mid minutes yet I don't know so sounds like he's playing midfield so I brought him in and yeah pretty happy with that if you got him a few weeks ago for even cheaper I mean I paid 420 I think if you got him for 370 you'd be happy so uh, he's going to be in my midfield but um yeah, he's going to be our M8, I think, or M7. He's actually higher than Steel, but um, yeah, we'll get to Steel soon. So, so onto the defense. So Nick Day costs 132. Um, very good. Very happy with that, but who cares? Everyone has him. Stewart was good for you. Intercepts late, which helped him. Uh, Dawson was outstanding. Again, better DT than SC for some reason, um, but yeah, he, he was unbelievable. Tackles, hit a few nice kicks inside 50, but did fluff a few early. So yeah, that's a bit annoying, but oh, he's so good. I don't know. Do you start him in the midfield next next year? It's going to be expensive, but he's so bloody good to watch. Um, he's got that age upside too. Still pretty. I think he's only 24-25, so 100th game uh, today. So yeah, he was outstanding. Uh, Sinclair, 133. A few weeks ago, I said, um, do you prefer Sinclair or Lloyd on the podcast? And I think I was leaning towards Lloyd and boy that was a very silly call but at the time Lloyd was actually averaging more and I think Sinclair was coming off two seventies in two weeks so something like that and more mid time but yeah I think Sinclair probably just primed himself for the back half of the year whereas watching Lloyd um, he's just not the main guy Blakey is but he still gets enough points back there um, and there was no supply for Lloyd so plus he played on a wing so I think he'll be a fine pick fine D5 D6 Jake Lloyd but um, yeah, definitely Sinclair, much better player, should have not said that. But yeah, hard to believe they were, Lloyd was averaging more than Sinclair at the time. Day was fantastic, took Sicily's role for a bit, went in the midfield, 140. We take that as, you know, it hasn't been a great trade-in, but to get some sort of bounce back is very good, and we're keeping him for the year, not like we have a choice, but yeah, happy with that. And uh, yeah, we got Weddle... 51 we needed more from Weddle and Humphrey very badly this week um I mean 51 from Weddle I mean you can't I mean Mitchell went 90 which was very annoying but can't like ask too much from him so that's fine and Himmelberg's our d6 so that's I think that's our major weak link uh midfield Laird Merritt Neil uh Brayshaw Key's very good all very good not much else to say on them Merritt sort of I think a bit of tension bit of half forward I think well, he got it was half forward for a bit, um, but yeah, he was very, very good. Uh, Neil's doing really well too. So I think these uh, Laird Merritt will bring these guys on. Green and uh, Johnson was very good to cover as well. But yeah, I think this midfield, the first five are very good. Very happy with them. I think they'll be top eight on the run home, if not like top ten. I think Green, pretty popular pick. So I think he's fine. Um, not, I don't think he's top eight, but I think he won't be too far off, like your M7, M8s. I think Keys can go with, um, like, your Anderson and Rao even. Uh, I don't know how close he'll go to them, but I think he's, like, not too far off, provided he stays in the midfield, because I think that's four tons in a row in the midfield, so he's pretty consistent, but, um, you know, he could have a down game soon or whatnot, but, yeah, the role's good for now, so... Fingers crossed, and then Steele... I was so happy to see him play well, and he didn't even ton. So that's the that's the level that we're at at the moment. But 
I think definitely has been a bit, you know, general soreness, Achilles, shoulder, um, knee. Like, just a whole bunch of stuff has probably bothered him all year. And maybe, like, form as well. You combine it all together and he spits out a three-round average of 65. But, yeah, good to see him back almost turning up. I thought he played all right. A few unlucky turnovers, I think. So, um, he's a mate and we're just going to stick with him. So, is what it is. Um, yeah, 450, wow. And yeah, MJ was very good, 99. Gave away a very dumb 50 and was taken... I think he copped a pretty bad cork late and came off. So could have tunned, but no, that's fine. So I think we're going to keep him for cover for the year. I would have loved a 23rd premium, but uh, no, we're stuck with Johnson and Weddle. But that's... It's fine, but it's not what we planned for or wanted. So uh, is what it is. Um... English Marshall combo, that's fine. And then the Fords, uh, I mean, everyone was good. Had the VC on, I don't want to be Captain Hindsight, but I don't know why I took it off Gordon. I think me and Eno said Gordon VC in the podcast, and we both took it off him for some reason. I was looking through, might have been Wednesday, looking through all the leagues. No, no, no. Um, Thursday, maybe? I don't know. I was looking through all the leagues, and everyone had VC Dunkley, so I just thought, VC Dunkley with everyone else, like an absolute cuck. And yep, that's all right. Lost 42 points. That's very annoying. And yeah, DC, whatever, very good. So we'll bring Rosie back on. So Humphrey was getting pretty nervous. I was kind of worried that he wasn't going to score enough to get to our trade target. So uh, we'll go like that for now. So we basically need an M8. I already know the player that I'm going to bring in, and I haven't even looked at who else, but. If Humphrey somehow average scored like 110, we might have been able to get Petrarca, and Petrarca's break even. It's just the timing's been off. It's 160, and he, he could easily hit that, but he just hasn't dropped. There's just too many, like 150 here, 120, 95, spits out a bad one, 120. He had that massive, massive one a few months ago. So he just, yeah, he doesn't, he hasn't dropped in price at all. So he's been under like unattainable and if you got him early you'd be very happy knowing that it's quite difficult for people to get him um so who can we go here so we'll go on say last five average we got butters here i'll just it's butters but we'll see who else we can look at um i will take it out for now so oliver we can't afford but He's probably not going to play this week, so it is what it is. Josh Kelly, we can get to, but I don't think I ever want to pick him again. As good he, as he is to watch, he is a burn man. Jack McRae is no CBAs. I can't go there. Uh, I do like him, though. I don't know. I can't figure out this five-round average with, like, in a forward role, but I think last time, last week was wing, which was even worse. I don't like that. Nick Martin's been unreal. I can't figure this out, but he'd be kind of cool pod, even though his role isn't... Can't make full sense of it either. So, I don't know. He's just been good, but not... You prefer to follow the fundamentals of, or role fundamentals, if that makes sense. Parker's been pretty good. Just continues to be some... Find a way to be relevant every year. Like, always kind of an M8 option um, forward last year. And I guess played at West Coast this week. Libba could be a pretty cool pod, but a bit older. I don't want, like, I think soft tissue late last year. I probably won't go there, but, yeah, he'll be a nice pod for sure. Uh, especially they got this Marvel run coming up, which is pretty nice. Uh, Warner, not interested. Titch, 85, no, nah, not interested. Degoe's coming back. Parrish, not interested. Wines would have been a good pickup a few weeks ago. Sarong, playing through the ankle issue, not for me. Uh, Crouch has been pretty good. His time and ground isn't super high, but... I mean, uh, you got Anderson here. Like, Anderson's okay. Not really in love with the pick. Zach Butters for me. And that gives me a bit more flexibility with cover if I want to loop MJ and take somebody off. So MJ plays uh, Marvel against the Dogs. Uh, when does Steel play? So I <laughs> Steel plays Eagles, though. So I could take somebody off if... I think via DPP, if we can trade rookies in and out, we can actually um, use MJ to cover any line, I think. Like, say we trade a rookie, I don't know, in and out, and then 
we can move like Himmelberg goes to the forward line, uh, Roberts goes up, Constable goes up into the back line. So that sort of thing. So um, yeah, that's one thing to keep in mind if you don't have cover on all lines. Uh, obviously, late outs will be pretty tough. Players will be locked and whatnot. But I mean, two trades left. That's the final team. Looking through Discord, I think most people have two to three trades left, uh, which is not really standard. I think for other communities or on Twitter, I think a lot of a lot on Twitter have like four, four or five left. But we seem to have two or three. Um, pretty low. Um, so I think uh, looking at the back line, Dacos, Stewart, Dawson, Sinclair, all pretty common. So very happy with those four. Uh, Day is highly owned enough where I think it won't kill us too much if he doesn't do super well. And then Himmelberg, if Himmelberg does bad, we do bad basically. So that's not one I'm comfortable with, but um, yeah, fingers crossed that goes okay. Uh, yeah, Himmelberg, he just needs to hold the role. I think last week he scored 70-odd, but gave away like a dumb 50. It should have been like an 85. If like that, that one play was a free kick to him, like it should have been rather than a 50. Um, midfield, yeah, the, I guess, uh, I don't know, who do we want to throw in the mids? We'll just forward line looks better like that. So we'll throw a key, so F7, sorry, uh, M7, M8, pretty weak, I guess, but... Keys might not be the worst if he can continue the midfield role. He's got West Coast again soon, or last round. He's got Adelaide Oval against North this week, so love that. Rucks are fine, I think. It's, unless Briggs puts a lot on Marshall, uh, it's going to be pretty hard to lose points in this Ruck line, so happy with that. And I think the Ford line, or Butters is our, rather than having negative pods in, I don't know if, Day's a negative pod, but we'll just call him call him that for now. But Day, Himmelberg, Keys, Steel, uh, Butters isn't super highly owned, so he'll be a, uh, a good pod for us. So we can make up a bit of ground there, make up a bit with English for those who don't have him. So they're the two, Butters, English, we need to do really well. And then, yeah, Keys, Steel, Himmelberg. Day. Himmelberg's the main one that I'm worried about. If Steel goes bad, I think his ownership's not too bad, but a lot would have traded. So, um, yeah, just hold the faith, I guess, and... Nine weeks, two trades remaining. It's not a good, great spot, but at least we've got a little bit of cover and looking around the Discord and not alone on low trades. So, um, yeah, the plays we need to do bad. Luke Ryan was infuriating to watch because a few people brought him in in Discord and, oh my goodness, his role was like, i never seen seagulling like that before. Just Or the amount of space he had in defense was unbelievable and they just kept kicking back to him and he'd run like run backwards to the square and get more cheap marks took a few intercepts as well it's like a 140 dt game pretty crazy for a defender to get like a 140 plus dt so um and then ridley as well ridley was so frustrating because you started him thinking he'd showed not to this level but you know some sort of improvement uh, in his role but he just looked like he's wants the footy a bit more a bit more confidence um going for intercepts a bit yeah, I don't know. He just looks very, very good at the moment. So 420k, probably w wish I went him over Tom Stewart. Would have had a bit more extra money, get like a Petrarca or, or, and with that money or get like a much better uh, M, M9 sort of player. So um, yeah, need um need those two to do bad. Ridley and Luke Ryan to do bad because yeah, a lot, they were pretty popular to bring in this week in Discord. Need Jake Lloyd to do bad, but not too worried about him because I think he'll be capped when, um, you know, you see Blakey used a lot back there. Uh, Florin a little bit, I'm not too sure. So I think he'll be capped. So I don't think he can hurt you not having him. Midfield is just Petrarca is going to kill us. And then Sarong Anderson, we need to do bad. Uh, and Matt Rowe as well, I think. I think he's in a few teams. So probably, you yeah, need them to do bad uh rocks are fine then forward line i don't think there's much better in the forward line than this apart from maybe like a jake mccray or a daniel so just have a look at the forward line it's just jake mccray need cheesewood to do bad need cogs to do bad uh what's evil's ownership he's dropped a lot 21 she's was is still really high and luke jackson weirdly enough has been going really really well lately so um Who's our fifth one? Oh, Darcy Cameron. So look at three rounds. That's fine. So I think um, 
Forward line is fine. I think, yeah, Daniel's like so lowly owned that's not going to matter too much. And yeah, McRae. I mean, I think these players can all score well enough in line with McRae. Um, maybe not Darcy Cameron, but um, just depends how he goes. Not too sure. So um, that's a team. That's pretty much pretty much it for, you know, all the super coach. We'll still do like videos and podcasts and whatnot, but I think everything will be a bit shorter going forward. Um, and yeah, it should be good. So thank you for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one.